want to see Elise start against Chelsea. I want to see Elise start at centre-back next to Craig Dawson. Earlier in the week, I did a video about what Moyes could do with the news that Issa Diop's out for the remainder of the season. But this video is about what I would like to see him do. And it's not just me. Coming up in this video, I've got a clip from the former under-23 manager, Dimitri, as well. I reached out to him upon the news of Issa Diop. I said, oi, could I get your thoughts on Elise potentially playing against Chelsea, please? So he's kindly sent over a clip. So we'll get his thoughts as well. Somebody who's worked with Elise for two years at West Ham United. Some of that knows him a lot more than I and you do. So we'll hear from him. But for me, there's two things to this. There's a situation... And then there's the player. So let's start with the situation first of all. Now this ain't an easy one for Moyes, okay? Because I don't think he'll start Elise. I would like him to. I don't think he will. I won't be too angry towards David Moyes for not doing it. I will completely understand why if he goes down the route, which I think he will do, which is three at the back, and it'll be Creswell, Dawson, Johnson. I'm expecting to see that at Chelsea, and I will get it. I will completely get why he's doing it. Because the situation we're throwing in Elise into, potentially... It's not an easy, straightforward one, is it? I think if we... I mean, looking at the fixture itself, away to Chelsea, that's difficult. Regardless of everything else, that's a difficult fixture on its own. I think it's because it's a centre-back as well. I've always found, I've always felt that outfield positions only, that the centre-back is probably the most difficult position to put a youngster in at. You know, you put somebody in up front or on the wing, it doesn't quite work out, he's not having a great game, that's fine. You, you take him off, you put someone else on. It's not going to cost you a goal. Well, it might cost you scoring a goal, but they'll get other chances. It's not... Do you know what I'm trying to say badly here? Centre-back, it could be very unforgiving. Centre-back makes a big error. Could lead to goal. We saw it. I remember um, Arsenal. Jack Rice was playing centre-back. The ball came in. He thought Joe Hart called for it. He ducked. Ended up in the back of the net. Huge error from Jack Rice. Cost us a goal. Ended up costing us the game as well. So, it is... A ruthless position to play and you make a mistake you're done for but you can't not play players in case they make an error anyone can make it Craig Dawson can make one we've seen Diop make a plenty this season um, Ogbonna Zuma any of them can make errors defensively so it's I guess it's a probability is the probability of a youngster making an error higher than those more experienced players probably but that's always going to be the case until they get game time and at least he is, he's got to be ready now, hasn't he? If he's not ready now, he's never going to be. He's 21 years old. He's not a kid. And for a 21-year-old, bar first-team football, he's got all the experience you need. Playing for England international at youth level, captain of the 23s, been training with the first team all season. If he ain't ready for now, he's not going to be ready. He won't get his chance next season, because next season, the expectancy is we have four senior centre-backs fit, ready to go. That puts Elise at best fifth choice centre back. At the minute, in theory, he's second choice centre back. Let's have a look at him. Now, the situation Chelsea away, difficult fixture, obviously. But it's crucial time in the Premier League. Six games to go in the Premier League. We're well on the hunt for the top six. We've also got the Europa League semi finals. And I'd like to think, I'd like to think if we were 10th, we couldn't get European football, we weren't going to get relegated. I'd like to think in this situation, we were not in a competition. So at six Premier League games to go this season, that's it. I'd like to think at least they would go in because it doesn't really matter. You make an error, it's fine. You're still going to play the next. You're guaranteed to play the next six Premier League games. Get that experience on your belt, and we're going to have a real good look at you. But that's part of the reason I'd play him against Chelsea because we might discover something. Like I said, if we don't play him now, when will we ever play him? He goes in against Chelsea, and he does really well. Moyes is then at least got an option going into the Frankfurt game, Elise becomes a viable option to play at the heart of the defence. He has a bad game, you just don't play him against Frankfurt. Simple as that, you go to plan B, which would probably be the three senior centre-backs. But you've got to give him an opportunity at some point. Also, what we're going to do, if say we play Chelsea and Ben Johnson then comes up with an injury, then what? We go into Frankfurt with, you almost have to play Elise there. I think the Chelsea game... If, if the worst case scenario happens, Alise goes in, makes a, has a howler of a game, we get beat, that's the worst case scenario. It's not the end of the world. I will be disappointed, obviously, but it's not the end of the world. If we miss out on top six football this season, it won't be because of something an inexperienced 21-year-old's done at Stamford Bridge. It'll be because we've got two points against Burnley. It'll be because we've got no points against Brentford. They're the games that's going to have cost us our top six. And they're the games that we played with Dawson, Zuma, Ogbonna and Issa Diop at the centre-back. No youngsters were in that team and we failed in those ones. 
at least it has to be given an opportunity. And I think it's important for the club. If I've got one criticism of David Moyes this season, it's I would have liked to have seen some more youngsters on occasions. Not all the time. Not all the time. But I think there's been some games this season what we've all felt we could have had a little look at a youngster here and there. Maybe 10 minutes to go because we're comfortably winning or we're comfortably getting beat. You know, away to Brentford to some extent. That would have been a good opportunity to bring on one of the youngsters for 15 minutes just to have a look at them. It's like, well... The game's done here. Uh, we ain't getting back into this. The senior teams it ain't doing it. Let's put a youngster on and have a look. And I think had he done that this season, at least he would maybe have had five more appearances under his belt. It might have been one start in four ten-minute periods or something at left-back to cover for left-back just to get him on the pitch. He might have been a little bit more ready for this occasion. But Moyes doesn't have a crystal ball. He was never going to know that three centre-back, three senior centre-backs are going to be injured at the same time coming up to the the final part of the Premier League season but if I've got one criticism it's it's that the youngsters could have been used a little bit more like against um, Burnley on the bench we didn't have a centre back we had Masuaku Fredericks and Sufal on the bench and, and but no centre back why? because they took priority over Elise and I just thought that was wrong I thought Elise you know if anyone that tuned into the build up show will know that I said this Elise should have been on the bench on Sunday ahead of one of those fullbacks, Masuaku or Fredericks, obviously, they should have missed out. At least he's on there, so you've got a balanced bench. And then when Diop got injured against Burnley, I don't know when the impact injury ha happened, but say it was 20 minutes ago, Diop could have said, I'm, I'm injured here, right, okay, at least say, on you go, you've got 20 minutes, you know, you, it's a tough, tough game, but we're on top, on you go, get out there, get, get 20 minutes under your belt, let's have a look at you. So we've missed the opportunity to have a look at Lise. But we've got a massive one coming up on Sunday. Anyway, enough for me. Let's have a little listen for what Dimitri's got to say. Hey, Joe. I know you wanted a bit of an update on Nagy. Um, really competent footballer. You know, left-footed, can bring the ball out, can dribble out, and has got a good range of passing. Defensively quick. You know, good 1v1. Doesn't really get beaten in the channel. Good in the air. Uh, really ball-playing ball centre-half. A real kind of West Ham-type centre-half who can bring the ball out and be comfortable in possession. His ways defend really well um good communicator really good leader on the pitch good leader off the pitch also um he really led the dressing room when i was doing the under 23s there were times when we had to speak to players and we'd go to speak to them about an issue that we had with them and, and Adji had normally already got there first and dealt with it for us um on the pitch he's always talking great communicator uh loved by all the lads and really respected by all the lads um every step i've ever seen Adji take he's always made that level, whether it be under 23s, whether it be the Papa John's Trophy, um, whether it be playing for England under 20s level, he always seems to raise his performance and get to that level. I think he did well in the Europa game that he played earlier in the season. So I think it's a, it'd be a great time for Adji to really step up again and really take that position in the first team. I really hope that he gets it. Um, like Steve Potts has done a lot of work with him when I was there. Steve really mentored him and what a great mentor as a as a centre half and Steve Potts really helped him out to read the game. Ricky Martin has done a lot of work with him, academy manager looking after him. I'm sure uh, Mark Robson has done a lot since he came in as well. So he must be in an even better place by now. So he's a, he's a top player, a top prospect. And I really hope he gets the opportunity. Massive thank you to Dimitri for to sending that in. So there you go. There's somebody that's coached Elise for two years at West Ham United. He's worked with him day in, day out. He knows about Elise and he'd like to see Elise be given a chance. Now I'm going to elaborate on one of the stories. He sort of alluded to it there, which is when he shows great leadership off the pitch. There is a story. Um, so basically a, a player in the under-23s did a, a post on social media which had to be removed. So he did it. One evening he did a post. I don't know who the... I think I know who the player is, but I don't want to get into that. That's not the point, right? So the player did a post. And the next day, Dimitri and Steve Potts went up to the player in question that had done the post to ask them to remove it. To basically say, Just take that down, please. I don't think that's the right thing to do. So when they took him to one side and had that conversation with him, the player responded and said, I've already done it. At least they told me to remove it. So at least they... In, the evening prior in his free time and noticed that his teammate had done this post got in touch with him rang him up probably and said listen mate you're going to have to take that down it's not it's, you can't be doing that bang he did it the player in question did it immediately great leadership from Elise shows just how much respect he has from his teammates it's the equivalent of Mark Noble doing it to one of the senior players at West Ham United it's the equivalent of 
Ryan Fredericks putting something up and Mark Noble ringing him saying, Ryan, mate, you can't be doing that. Take that down. And because of the, the respect that Mark Noble commands from the change room, Ryan Fredericks goes, yes, no worries, boss. I'll get that down straight away. That's what Lee said done. Great leadership. And he's just, he's a, he's a bloody good centre-back. I've liked him for a few years now. He, there's been a lot of, um, he's had a reputation within West Ham, if you like, since he was 16 years old about how he could go on to be the, Sort of the next centre back at West Ham that comes through the academy, and it looks like he will be. We've not had any centre backs come through. He's 21 now, so in that five years, we've had no centre backs come through the academy to play for West Ham, and he, he looks brilliant. And when we talk about youngsters, there's a big difference sometimes. You look at, you know, um, Perkins. I know he's young. I know Perkins is only 17, but you look at him and Alise. Alise is a growing man. He's he's over six foot. Ben Johnson's just under six foot at least he's over six foot he's well built fantastic on the ball we saw it against Zagreb what a really inexperienced back line against that team and they coped they coped well that was European football and I'm aware Zagreb is not the same opposition as Chelsea or Arsenal or Frankfurt or that I'm aware of that but he didn't have Craig Dawson and Alan Creswell either side of him. You know, we've just heard from Dimitri about how he's a great communicator. Well, he would need that at Chelsea. He would need to be talking to Dawson and Creswell and Fabianski. He need to listen. But he's got that. And I just think it's important that we give him a chance for the club. We, we call ourselves the Academy of Football. Well, you can't be the Academy of Football if you don't give the youngsters an opportunity. And obviously, we've got Ben Johnson and Declan Rice. With some of the youngsters have had minutes. We've just spoken about the Zagreb game where... Longello played, Baptiste played, Elise played, we saw Ashby this season as well, Perkins has had a chance, Chester's has been on the pitch as well. We've had plenty of youngsters get some form of minutes this season. But we're going into a crucial summer at this football club in terms of recruitment, in terms of buying players. And I always think you've got to be appealing. Crystal Palace, I imagine, would almost have pick of the litter in the championship this summer. If they went they turned up to if Ben and Johnson was looking for a move at West at West Ham, Ben and Johnson Forrest was thinking about going to the Championship or Lewis Potter at Hull was thinking Premier League. And if clubs, let's just say, I don't know, Southampton, Newcastle, Crystal Palace and Everton went in for those players, I would imagine they'd be more inclined to go towards Crystal Palace because they're doing it. They're giving the youngsters an opportunity this season. You look at their team, half of them were in the Championship last season. They're saying, come to Palace, you will get a chance. And that's what we need to do. We need to be able to say, you know, last summer we had what looks like a, a really good recruitment for the academy. Okoflex came in, Thierry Neves came in. We've got Equa from Chelsea come in as well. So we've got those players, but we've yet to see them in the first team. Now, it is a bit difficult for those ones because they can't play European football as the one they signed last summer. But you need to appeal to this summer, the next summer, you need to say, look... At Elise, he's come through the academy. Come to West Ham, we will give you a chance here. We've just got to be appealing. And I think if this, if Elise don't get a chance now, when will he ever get a chance? He's 21, he's not young anymore. He, he needs to be playing football now. He needs to be playing football. If he doesn't get a chance in the next month or so, I'd understand it and almost expect him to be turned around and saying, well, I need to go out on loan, minimum loan next season, possibly even leave West Ham to go on and get first team football elsewhere because I'm 21 years old now. I need to go out and play football. It would be a huge risk for Moyes to chuck Alicia in. Let's make no mistake about it. Like I said, there's a lot of things up for grabs with West Ham. But I think I think it's riskier to not play Alicia in and play him for some extent. Like I said, I'm not going to blame Moyes if he doesn't play him. I'm not going to kick off on Sunday when the teams come out Alicia don't play because I'm not expecting him to. That'd be a bit of me that'd be a bit disappointed. Of course there would be because you always want to see the youngsters come through the academy and play in the first team. You want to see that as a fan, naturally. But now we have one fit senior centre-back. If he ain't going to get in now, when is he going to get in? Is it good enough? There's only one way of finding out. It's like I said in the previous video earlier this week, sometimes these youngsters just need a little bit of luck to happen for them to get into the team. You take a look at the Man United team the other night, um, Hannibal that came on. He only came on because the game was done. The game was over, pardon me, uh, I think it was 4-0 at the time, it might have been 3-0, whatever. Liverpool, the game was finished, the players on the pitch were doing rubbish, they weren't even bothering. 
So Raggedy turns round to the youngster and says, well, you get out there. And what did he do? He went out, he started running around, closing players down, and bang, chops, chopped down uh, Kate. I got a yellow card for his troubles, but I'll tell you what, it's a man you fan, and you're thinking there, at last, someone with a little bit of heart. It was almost luck in his part, Hannibal's, because, it was, I say luck, but because the first team had done so, so crap, he got his opportunity that night. Well, here's at least say, now that those three senior centre-backs are injured, he may get an opportunity at West Ham. You put him in and it works out. We've just saved ourselves millions, millions. And we know we need a centre back this summer. Or I say we know we need one. We're getting told Moyes wants a centre back this summer. At least it could be the answer. We just don't know. Now, the way people will say, well, hang on, Moyes knows more about Lise than you do. Of course he does. Um, I haven't seen every under 23 game this season. I think, I think I've seen about. A a quarter, a third in between there of their games this season because luckily they're streamed on YouTube more often now and um, obviously because I could do this for my job now if it's streamed on a Friday afternoon I can sit and watch it it looks too good at least it looks too good for the 23s and you have to you've got to look special at that age group in order to be good enough to step up but at least it looks like it how all you have to do is look at his goal against um, Swansea picks the ball up and outside our own half dribbles past three players and belts it in from outside the box top player top leader sounds like a top lad as well and um, I just hope he gets his opportunity against Chelsea I really want to see Elise get a chance so there you go I shall rest my case but let me know what you think in the comments below I'll be back tonight with Gonzo where we'll be doing the preview for the Chelsea game we'll be interested to see what Gonzo would like to see happen at the heart of the defence for West Ham United drop a like on the video if you enjoy it subscribe to the YouTube channel catch you a bit